Narito tayo ngayon sa Philippine Bible Society along United Nations Avenue sa Manila at uh, upang maalaman natin ang kanilang mga ginagawa kung tungkol sa organisasyon na ito at uh, kung paano nila ipinakakalat mm -hmm. ang mabuting salita ng Diyos. At very exciting po ang ating araw ngayon at kwentuhan natin ngayon, Bishop, dahil ang bida mm -hmm. po sa episode natin ay walang iba kundi ang Biblia. Bilang mga Kristiyano ay mahal natin ang salita ng Diyos dahil it is through the Bible that we came to know of the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's also through God's Word that we keep on growing as children of God. At malaki po ang ginagampanan ng Philippine Bible Society sa pagpapalaganap ng mga Biblia sa buong bansa. That is true. Very true. Kaya sa ating What's Brewing segment ay sasamahan tayo ni Dr. Nora Lucero at siya ang General Secretary ng Philippine Bible Society. At pag-uusapan natin ang naging simulain ng organisasyon na ito. Ang kanilang kasaysayan at uh, kung ano mga kasulukuyang programa nila sa lahat ng Pilipino. At dahil nandito rin po tayo sa kanilang main office, ay magtutur din po tayo dito sa pinagmamalaki nilang Bible Museum. Kaya stay tuned po mamaya sa ating Espresso Self kasama si Gabby at Rona. Wow! Bible Museum, ha? Ay sabihin, on location ng ano natin, ha? ang shoot natin. Sa atin naman pong Doc Talks ay makakasama natin si Dr. Chris Enriquez at usapang health, wellness naman, the biblical way. Alam nyo, kailangan po natin niya kung ano yung pamamaraan na consistent sa salita ng Diyos. Ano po? At dito natin malalaman ng pag-aalaga ng ating mga katawan para sa ating kalusugan. Isa naman pong exciting na isang oras ng kwentuhan ng ating pagkasaluhan ngayong araw na to. Kaya po kayo maglilipat ng channel. Ako po si Reza Abante Yebra. At ako naman, si Bishop Ruben Abante. Join us and let us have good talk over good coffee. Welcome to Lighthouse Cafe. The Philippines is generally known to be Asia's most predominantly Christian country and has one of the most number of Christian citizens in the world. In fact, we are number five no, sa buong mundo of being such. And uh, we are blessed na we are a country no, na may pinakamaraming masasabi nating biblical Christians around. And we can exercise and share our faith within our motherland. That's true, Bishop. It's something that we really treasure as Christians na maaari tayong makapagpahayag ng ating pananampalataya freely. Sa ibang basa kasi, alam naman po natin, o lalo dito sa Asia, mayroon pa rin mga bansa na ipinagbabawal ang pagbabasa and even sharing the Word of God. And as we know from history, the road that our Christian forefathers had trod, particularly in the New Testament mm. times, were bloody. Oh yes, totoo yun. Talagang madugo. As in, even physically madugo, mm -hmm. Reza. Throughout the centuries. At napakarami mga persecutions ang kinaharap mm -hmm. ng ating mga ninuno sa pananampalataya. Mm -hmm. Kagaya ng mga apostles. Mm -hmm. Isa na sa nasa, nasa likod ko. Oh, well, well, that's actually a figure of uh, the Apostle Paul. And uh, now, tayo bilang mga biblical Christians, we have the mandate na ipahayag ang salita ng Diyos sa lahat. And we have uh, friends and mga kapatid sa Panginoon sa mga iba't ibang organisasyon such as what we have today, Reza. Okay. The Philippine Bible Society as being an effective vehicle in spreading the Word of God. And joining us today is the General Secretary of Philippine Bible Society, none other than Dr. Nora Lucero. Okay, welcome to Lighthouse, Dr. Nora. Welcome to Lighthouse Cafe po. Dok, dito na po sa gitna. Okay, magandang, magandang araw sa magandang iyo. Araw. Magandang araw. Magandang araw. Magandang araw, Reza. At maraming maraming salamat sapagkat pinaunlakan mo ang, you know, you you accommodated us sa uh, Lighthouse Cafe dito sa museum ninyo. Mm. Wow, it's always, always our honor and joy to have you yes. as a... Uh, uh, how the Lord continue to, continues to use you in proclaiming the Word of God. So it's our joy to welcome all of you here. We are you. partners in right. uh, giving, uh, spreading the Word of God mm -hmm. sa ating mga kababayan, no? here and abroad. Mm -hmm. Nagpapasalamat na ho ang Philippine Bible Society sa inyo, Bishop, sapagkat sa mahabang panahon, patuloy ho kayong naroriyan at naging yes. partner kayo sa pagpapalawak ng salita ng Diyos sa ating bayan. Hindi lang dito, no? Kundi sa yeah, abroad oh. din. So, Hindi ko pwedeng makalimutan ng uh, Philippine Bible Society kasi alam mo, yung 
pinaka-tagline itong show na itong Lighthouse Cafe is where good talks happen. Oh, At walang nice. ibang pinakamagandang pag-usapan kundi ang salita ng Diyos. Well, some questions, no? Kasi hindi naman kasi lahat ng nanonood sa atin ay lubos na naunawaan kung ano ang Philippine Bible Society. Paano ito nagsimula? Siguro maaari ka magbigay ng mga insights dito. Mm. We look back to 1899, Bishop and Reza, mm -hmm. as the start of uh, uh, Bible distribution in the Philippines. That was the time when uh, Reverend J.C. Goodrich and his wife came here in the Philippines on November 26, 1899 to start the formal biblical distribution. No? 1800s 1899. Pa, oh. um, salamat sapagkat before them was the time of the Spanish colonial period. Yes. And at that time, yung Biblia, naku, oh. si Bawal Tanagang, hindi Bawal 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 na pinag-uusapan, hindi binabasa. Oh, right. But when they came, the Lord opened the way so that many of our uh, kababayans had the opportunity of uh, having a copy of the word, mm -hmm. uh, reading it, mm -hmm. and by God's grace, nagkaroon ng pagbabago sa ating bayan. In fact, ang unang uh, translation ng Biblia ay kinawa noong ni ng isang pare, yes. si uh, uh, Manrique Lalyabe. And the first one was the translation of the uh, Luke, Luke in Pangasinan. In Pangasinan. In Pangasinan. Oh. During the time na Spanish colonial era pa yun. Oh. Yeah. Pero, Pagkatapos no, nagkaroon ng, uh, uh, ang namatay siya, Bishop. Mm -hmm. I think because of what he did, nagkaroon ng medyo problema rin sa kanyang buhay. But mm -hmm. the Lord used him to open the way so that the Bible can be read mm -hmm. in our own language. At yun na ang simula, nung ang Biblia ay hindi lamang sa Espanyol. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kundi nagkaroon ito ng pagkakataon na magkaroon ng translation sa at least yung eight major languages of the Philippines. We start up, no? Pangasinan, Pampango, mm -hmm. Ilocano, Tagalog, Bicol, Samareño, Hiligaynon, and uh, Cebuano. Cebuano. Plus, of course, English. Yung siyam na lingwaheng yun cover about 90 to 95 percent of our population. So that was the tact that the Bible Society did so that yung Biblia maintindihan ng ating mga kapamayan sa pinaka malaking porsyentahe ng ating populasyon. Mm -hmm. Natatagan pa yung mga lingwaheng niya, mga dialects na yan right. through the years. Yeah, because the Bible Society, of course, is into the mission of making the Word of God Number one, available, no? Yes. At, but uh, because we had, uh, we have many languages in the Philippines, at least yung major languages na yon, we needed to have translation of the Bible. Yes. But of course, after the translation, we go into publishing, no? Yes. Production, uh, distribution. And then, by God's grace, nakita natin ang pagbabago ng ating mga kababayan mm -hmm. dahil sa pagbabasa ng Biblia. Mm -hmm. And we partner with churches and organizations. Mm -hmm. Paano po ba yung process ng translation? No, no? Like, for example, yung Tagalog, ano, mm -hmm. um, was it direct from the English or yung original? Ano pa? Paano po ba yun, uh -oh. yung process? We don't uh, translate from, another, from a language like uh, English. Mm -hmm. You we don't tra translate from another translation? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. We go okay. back to the original languages. Yes. Uh, Hebrew, uh, Aramaic, mm -hmm. Little Aramaic, and Greek. Greek. And so we have Bible scholars that go into these languages mm -hmm. so that when they translate to Halima, Tagalog, so from the original languages, direct na yan sa Tagalog. Mm -hmm. Hindi dumadaan sa English, tsaka matatranslate sa Tagalog. So yung mga translators na po, in-house din po yun. Ano, we, have, uh, we have uh, translation consultants mm -hmm. that have really trained, no, went yes. deeper Galing. into the study of the word. At meron kaming mga translations then who are native speakers of the word. Yes. But in any translation team, you should have somebody who knows the biblical languages. Correct. Kinakailangan mm -hmm. meron silang grounding. Plus, of course, you have, to support, you have to support of the other Bible societies around the world Opo, in doing Bishop. this. Opo, oh. Bishop. Kasi napaka, you just have to be accurate mm. uh, compared with uh, original languages. Mm -hmm. And the translation should be natural. Yes. Yung bang naiintindihan ng ating mga Hindi kababayan. Hindi naman nagbabago ang original na manuscripts eh. Totoo. 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 Ever Totoo. since. Mm -hmm. Ang nagbabago ay eh, katulad ngayon, ano? Mm -hmm. Marami ng mga kung ano-anong salita no, nung araw din natin naririnig, mm -hmm. di ba? And uh, nadadagdagan nadadagdagan yung mga dictionaries natin. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do how how do this affect itong mga bagong ano, 
Mm. Kina kailangan ba nag upgrade halimbawa? Mm. Nag revise na may revisions din. Yeah, ba yeah, because ang ang sabi ng uh, research, mga 7 or 8 years, mm. nakakaroon na ng pagbabago ang lengguwahe. Oh. So kina kailangan titingnan natin yung translation natin kasi naiintindihan dapat yes. ng ating mga kababayan na natural ito sa kanilang pagbabasa at pagsasalita. Mm -hmm. Ang, ang lingwahe yung binabasa nila sa Biblia. Mm. Alam nyo, Bishop, meron lang, uh, siyempre, yung magandang balita, Biblia, ganun ang pagkakatranslate. Pero, meron nga yung bagong translation mm. ang uh, na ginagawa na pang, pang mga youth ito. Oh. Ang tawag, Pinoy Version Translation. So, parang so, mas... Nag-comment nga ako nung makita ko, sabi ko, oh, this is what you call the conversational, conversational. version. <laughs> Halimbawa, yung oh. Yeso Cristo, hindi na siya Yeso Cristo, Jesus Christ. Oh. Na, na ano siya, mm -hmm. na... Ang tawag, heterogeneous language, sabi nung aming oh. mga... So, parang taglish po, ano, uh -huh. yung ginagamit. Taglish, oo. Oh. Gano'n po ba katagal? Pag nagsama yung si Lord, tsaka si God. Ay, oo. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, anyway. Gano'n yeah. po ba katagal? Like, for example, um, from the original to the to Tagalog, ilang uh -huh. years po yung process uh, ng pag-translate? Medyo mahaba yan. Yung New Testament is uh, translated within about three to four lang, uh, years. Wow. Pero pag pumunta ka na sa uh, Old, Old Testament, Testament Yung, yung kompleto niyan, mga 8 years, 8, mga 9 years, ganyan. Mm -hmm. no? I, you know, I, am, yan. I am amazed na para mas maunawaan ng lahat, no? kung ano ang banda ng kasulatan, mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. ay dinadagan niyo pa ang inyong feature, hindi lang ng mga libro, ng mga translations, kundi right. ng Bible Museum mismo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At narito po tayo ngayon sa Bible Museum ng Philippine Bible Society. At ako ay talagang namamangha sa kanilang ginawa rito, ah, the history, okay, okay. throughout, uh, what, uh, 4,000 years of making, di ba? Yeah. Oo. Oh, oh. Well, uh, kailan ito nabuo, itong Bible? Mga ano ito, Bishop, I think mga 3 or 4 years ago. Yes. Kasi sabi na ng Bible Society, kinakailangan may platform na pati yes. yung mga maliliit na bata, nagsisimula pa lang to appreciate the Bible. Mm. Meron silang nakikitang katulad mga kababayan, oh. pumunta ho kayo rito para oh. ma-experience niyo yung joy of uh, uh, seeing the Bible Museum. Maintindihan nila paano ba napunta sa atin ang Biblia. Yeah. Kaya meron tayong ganito. So ang platform ay hindi lamang Bible Museum Bishop. Siyempre, the Bible is in print. Audio, mm. video, digital, mm -hmm. uh, ano pa bang platform? So, parang lahat ng formats, ano? Mm. Pero maganda po yung sinabi nyo kayo na kasi may youth Bible, no? So, ibig sabihin, meron ka din po kayong mga, ano, for each demographic. Like, for example, sa mga kabataan, sa mga parents po ba, may mga, or ano po ba? Meron kami ano ginawa na Bible for the family. Oh, meron pa kang Bible para sa OFW? Oo, oh, meron pa anong, pang... Ano pong, ano, 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 anong feature nun, yung mga gano'n, na parang special kind of Bibles? Ano, mga added articles about yeah. uh, how to grow a family, mga, uh, how to love together, how mm -hmm. to uh, give quality time to your children. Para mas maging relevant para ba, ano, yung... you pull together some references that would apply to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mas para mas madali yung pag-unawa nila. Hindi oh, naman nagbabago ang mensahe ng salita right. ng Diyos. No? Mm -hmm. Napakaganda na we've long been partners. Lalo na nung nasimulan yung Bible Week. Ay, oh, oh, oh Some years nako, back. Nako. Oh, naalala ko nung, eh, nung nakaraang ano pa. And uh, nabuksan natin. Nakapag-distribute tayo ng Bibles. No? Mm -hmm. Nag nagkaroon ng magandang uh, accommodation. Kahit mga mga government agencies. Mm. I, I still remember how we were together sa Malacanang. Mm. Wow. Okay? Supreme Naka Court, I think, nag-distribute oh, yes. din po Alam mo, nagkaroon, nagkaroon kami nung araw, anak, ng napakagandang pagkakataon because I, I had a very unique opportunity in addressing mm -hmm. the Supreme Court and Bank. Yeah. At nabigyan wow. ng mga uh, justices ng mga personalized Bibles. Yes. Alam nyo, Bishop at Teresa, nagpapasalamat tayo kasi sa Pilipinas, and not many countries have this, no? Mm -hmm. Na tatlong presidente natin uh, had a presidential proclamation mula kay President Marcos, mm -hmm. President Cory, si President uh, Ramos, giving importance to the Bible. And so mm -hmm. they declared the last week of January annually yes. uh, to be National Bible Week. Sa January 23 hanggang 29 po, 2017, mm -hmm. will be our National Bible Week again. Mm -hmm. On the theme, ang Biblia, ang pag-asa sa pag-unlad ng komunidad. 
Okay. Very Psalm 133 to one, uh, verse 1. So mm -hmm. it's a joy to be together as brethren. Mm -hmm. So salamat sapagkat sa pagkakataong ganito, binibigyan ng gobyerno natin mm -hmm. ng importansya ang Biblia sa national morality yes. ng ating bansa. Mm -hmm. Kasi at nakakatuwa Bishop kasi sa Enero ito, sa pagsisimula ng taon. Ilang na, buwan na lang. Opo, mm -hmm. sa oh yeah ay eh, binibigyan ng focus mm -hmm. ang Biblia na sana maging gabay ng ating bayan sa pagharap natin sa napakaraming mga challenges ng ating bayan ngayon. Mm -hmm. yes. Sana sa pagbabasa natin ang Biblia, to totoong makita natin ang Panginoon at sana ito'y maging gabay at ilaw sa pagdidesisyon nationally, mm -hmm. community, sa family at personally. Mm -hmm. Alam mo, hindi naman tayo masyadong nagpepresenta ng churchy thing or no but but the word of god no ang sabi ng banal na kasulatan heaven and earth shall pass away but my word no hindi ito malalaos ah, di ba oh no, hindi ito magmamaliw and then to add ang sabi ng panginoon eh ang sino mang nakikinig at tumatalima mm -hmm. sa aking mga salita ay iniyahambing niya sa isang matalinong tao mm -hmm. na nagtayo ng kanyang bahay sa ibabaw ng bato Amen. Eh, al alam naman naman al alam po naman natin ang lahat eh darating ang unos, ang bagyo, ang kabigatan mm -hmm. sa buhay, mm -hmm. you know. But when we are solid sa pakikinig mm -hmm. at pagtalima, pagsunod sa salita ng Diyos, mm -hmm. para tayong nakatayo sa matibay na bato. Amen. Totoo, Bishop. Hindi lang personal kundi bilang bansa. Amen. Mm -hmm. Nakakatuwa, Bishop. At uh, sa akin ho, personally, I'm privileged to see the testimonies of people yes. na nabigyan ho ng Biblia at nagpapatotoo kung paano binago at binabago ng Panginoon ang kanilang buhay. Mm -hmm. Mula ho sa pagiging mga basagulero, babaero, mm -hmm. lahat na yata ng ero. Sumalero, etc. Tama-tama po, no? kasi yung ano ng GCTV is changing lives through Christ. No? So, na-mention niyo po rin kanina, ma'am, yung sa community, di ba? Kasi doon sa research na basa ko, parang meron kayong ibanag, mga ifugaw na oh. languages. Nakakapag-distribute din po ba kayo doon sa mga ganong areas? And oh. nakakita, ano po yung results noon doon sa mga communities na ano na? Nakakatuwa. Uh, alam niyo dito sa, uh, on October 8, we will be launching the Bicol Rinconada New Testament. But I remember... Oh, Rinconada. Opo. Kaya... Parang... Tama ba? Parang mga Bicolano. Bicolano. Opo. Kaintindi ko. Tapos tayo galing. Sa area ka ba yun? Sa area ang yun. Rinconada o sa Arab Surrounding. Pero nakakatawa kasi there was one year, I think two or three years back, when we launched the Northern Subana New Testament. Doon sa Sambuanga del Norte, sa tuktok ng bundok, so pumunta kami doon. At nakakatuwa kasi maririnig mo yung pag nagbabasa na sila, talagang wow na wow na wow. Nakikita nila nag-iiyak, umiiyak yung iba kasi sinasabi talagang sa aming lingwahe ito. Oo. Alam mo, kahit sa lighthouse naman, sa church ay naroon pa din yung mga kabataan, kahit mga adults na, na nagme-memorize na ng scriptures. Every mga golden then, we, ano, ladies. Oo, oh, alam mo, we, we have even mga golden ladies mm -hmm. na magre-recite ng buong chapters. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh. Alam nyo, tama yung sinasabi, if you delight in the Lord, day yes. and, uh, if you read the word of God day and night, you will be like the tree, di ba? Planted, Planted by, dead, by the stream of water. Mm -hmm. Hindi na alala o siya, hindi yeah. na lulu o yan. Kundi oh. sa tamang panahon ng pupunga. Okay, how, magiging matagumpay. How can uh, people partner with the Philippine Bible Society? Pwede, pwede pong lumiham o sumulat. Lumiham, uh, lumay na yata oh. yun. Email na. No? Email, <laughs> email, oh, oh. email sa PBS. At sabihin ho ang pangangailangan. Ngayon, Bishop, di ba maraming nagsusurrender doon sa mga yung na drug addicts? Ay, naku, ano? yes. So, we partner with churches eh, because many of them are ministering in areas. Baka kailangan maglabas kayo ng Bible for drug addicts. Drug, oh. Sa mga drug rehabs. So, right. ang ginagawa namin ngayon, yung mga New Testaments na we are printing with uh, another organization, of the course, Generics yes. Pharmacy, okay. we make this available to the churches kasi mm -hmm. pag nag-minister sila doon sa mga sur surrenderies, yes. Uh, they use the New Testament to mm -hmm. see and to read the Word of God. And I think they give this out to the surrenderers. Yes. Yung mga ganun, then they, they, they can write the Bible mm -hmm. society. So they can also visit your website. Ano po, may ano po ba yun? www.bible.org.ph Ang amin pong trunk line, 526-7777. You're just not publishing Bibles. You publish also books and related na mga bagay. 
we publish those that are helping the people understand the Bible. Hindi po yung mga libro, Bishop. Oh, okay. Because we mm -hmm. really focus on the Bible and tools about the Bible. Yes. Like, uh, we've done the Greek Tagalog interlinear. Bagong-bago ko ito doon sa mga seminarians nag-aaral ng Biblia. On what to uh, look at the Greek, if you mm -hmm. are into the Greek language, and how we've translated this sa Tagalog. Makikita mm -hmm. niyo ho yung pag... Uh, pag uh, uh, we call this an interlinear, so you know yes. how the Bible was translated. So you can actually see kung anong... May kopya ka na ba nung Asia? <laughs> Wala pa yata. Ay, nako. Pwede tayo kumuha dyan sa ano. Yung interlinear ko na sa akin, PC study Bible. <laughs> oh, sige. <laughs> Meron din po kayong May Day Be One campaign. Oh. Yung, dun, ano po naman yung, ano yun, yung campaign na yun? The May Day Be One was the result of a national survey we did in 2005. Uh, the result of that sur uh, in, uh, the survey was about Bible readership mm -hmm. and ownership. And the result of that survey was that 60% of our people do not have a copy of the Bible. Oh, wow. At that time, we were at about 90 plus million people. So, kung 60% bishop, mga 50 million lang po. Mm, marami, marami yeah. yun. Oh. Majority. Oh, oh. The uh, main reasons were that the... Mm, can borrow the Bible. Pwede hiram uh, na lang. Oh, oh, uh, oh, kasi okay. I don't have the desire to own a copy and read mm. a copy by myself, no? And then, mahal daw ang Biblia. So, at saka marami pang iba. But anyway, we've treated yung pag pagbiging mahal ng Biblia with this campaign. Mm -hmm. Ang sabi namin, how can we be making the Bible more available, no? So, we've done a project na ang cost ng Biblia, uh, this is the cost that we make available, is 50 pesos. 50 pesos. 50 pesos. But the production cost and other ex expenses was about 150. We fixed it at 150. So, yung 100 pesos na Bishop, we asked partners to I join see. us in that campaign. Mm -hmm. oh. So, 50, 50 pesos for a Bible. Alam nyo, since the time that we uh, launched that in 2008, and mm. now we've distributed 2 million over wow. 2 million copies of the Bible to families that are really very poor. Mm -hmm. Kasi ang ano nun, hindi naman yung nakakabili. No? Kasi yung nakakabili, yes. please, bil bili naman kayo para ito ma, ma subsidize natin doon sa mga walang kaya talaga. Mm -hmm. So, yung very poor ito, yung mga nasa sa ferriteries, mm -hmm. at pamilya, nasa sa... Uh, nationwide po ito. Nationwide no? ito. So, we make that available. You are, you should be highly commended for such. Thank you, Bishop. Oh, oh. Salamat Sana sa makuha pamilya. lang ng ating mga kababayan that uh, the best use of Bible ay hindi lang sa shelf. Mm -hmm. no? <laughs> Minsan na naalag ang bukaan. O hindi lang linggo. Oo, oh, hindi <laughs> lang linggo. Buksan. Hindi lang pag na, you know. Pero sabi nga eh, uh, nang banal ako sulatan, Thy word have I healed in my heart. Amen. That I might not sin Amen. against God. Yan ang pinakatamang lugar ng banal na kasulatan. At hindi lang head knowledge. No? It's in the heart. Well, alam mo, Amen, Bishop. maraming maraming Amen. salamat, Nora. This has been a very informative episode para sa lahat. Ah. At ang value po ang kahalagahan ng salita ng Diyos ay hindi natin matatawaran. Mm -hmm. Hindi man natin ma-appreciate ngayon, no? dahil sinasabi natin, mayaman tayo, busy ako, may trabaho ako, bata pa ako, matanda na ako, but you know, we're going there. <laughs> haharap at haharap tayo kung hindi lang sa kamatayan sa Panginoon. Mm -hmm. At paano natin napakinggan ang kanyang mensahe. Amen. Well, congratulations sa uh, Philippine Bible Society. Oh. And, uh, Amen. Thank we you. pray for more success for you, more effective na gawain. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nora. At uh, partner niyo ang Lighthouse, partner mm -hmm. niyo ang Lighthouse Cafe. At salamat po sa inyong lahat at yes. sa Lighthouse for this uh, opportunity. Very God good. Maraming salamat. Praise God for this. At ngayon, samahan natin si Gabby at Rona mm -hmm. sa... Pagtutur na Manila, itutur po kayo, no, sa kabuuan ng uh, Bible Museum na ito, no, sa Philippine Bible Society. Abangan natin yan sa Espresso Self. Mga usaping in, mga paksang trending, mga talakayang may kabuluhan, lifestyle at kulturang sariling atin, buhay Pinoy, pag-usapan natin dito sa Espresso, Espresso Self! Self.
Rona, napaka-special ang episode natin ngayon dahil nandito tayo sa isang one-of-a-kind museum dito sa ating bansa. Dito tayo sa Bible Museum. Wow. Dito pa rin sa Philippine Bible Society sa UN Avenue. Alam mo, Gabby, I'm so excited to tour this museum. The last time kasi na nagpunta ako sa museum ay nung nag-tour pa kami sa Ilocos, we went to the Marcos Museum and Mausoleum. Pero ito kasi ibang-iba because it's all about the Bible. Exactly. And syempre, as Christians, we should always be excited to learn more about God's Word. Tama ka dyan, Rona. Napaka-exciting talaga. At para nga itour tayo ngayong um, araw na to dito sa Bible Museum, we have with us Dr. Annie Del Coro, a Bible Translation Consultant from the United Bible Societies and the Philippine Bible Society. Dr. Annie, thank you po and welcome to Lighthouse Cafe. Welcome is, po to Lighthouse Cafe. This is now po the Bible Museum. Dr. Annie, kailan po nag-start itong Bible Museum and what was the inspiration for, you know, putting this up? Well, um, the Bible is... Um, a very important book and that we want to read it and uh, it's very helpful if we we all all of us Christians will read it yes. mm -hmm. but uh, the Bible Museum was set up so that knowing more about God will be easier mm -hmm. we want to put the, the Bible in sights and sounds mm -hmm. so that people can understand internalize the content without being too difficult mm -hmm. And I think it started in mga November 2010, papo. Yes. And it has been running for almost six years now. Yes. And you mentioned the keywords in sights and sounds, yes. para may ma ipaliwanag na sa mga tao kung saan nagsimula yung Bible. Yeah, those okay. are the highlights, the mm -hmm. sights and sounds to share about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mamaya ka po, matut matitingnan natin yeah. mamaya ro na lahat ng sinasabi ni Dr. Mm -hmm. Ali. Earlier in the introduction po, it was mentioned that you are a Bible translation consultant. Ano po? Ano po ba yung Bible translation consultant? What do you do exactly po? Well, um, of course, the ministry of the Bible Society is to, one of the ministries is to translate the Word of God. But it's a very difficult thing to do mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that it is faithful to the original text that is Hebrew and Greek. And so the Bible, the trans, Bible translation consultant is uh, a person who is qualified only mm -hmm. if this person has a PhD mm -hmm. either in biblical studies or linguistics. Mm -hmm. And wow. then this person, if the PhD is in biblical studies, this person has to study again uh, linguistics mm -hmm. and vice versa. If the PhD is in linguistics, this person has to study biblical so studies. So both fields pala both And fields. you were trained in those both fields. We have to do that. So if the PhD is in, for example, in my case, linguistics, I took a course and I went to um, a seminary in the U.S. Mm -hmm. to study Hebrew and Greek. And you've been doing this for how long na po? 25 years. Wow, 25, 25 years. years and still so much passion mm -hmm. in what she does. Siguro mag-start na tayo sa tour natin. Oh, 4,000 na years to eh. <laughs> okay, let's go. Ano pa natin, ma'am? Alright, let's go. Yeah. Well, ang uh, Bible Society, uh, madalas tinatanong kami kung paanong nagkaroon tayo ng Biblia. Mm -hmm. So, how the Bible came to us, and, uh, and that is the reason why the very first exhibit centered on that. So this is, uh, this uh, exhibit is about how the Bible came to mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And so it starts with the call of uh, God to Abraham, 20th century BC. And uh, this is where uh, uh, God calls Abraham. And, uh, and from that on, from that time on, the relationship started. And okay. uh, from there, we continue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, ikutin natin, Gabi, no? And then, this, obviously, this one is uh, for, with Moses. Right. Yes. Apa. So, from the call of Abraham uh, by God, so, he called them his people. And so, uh, he started this relationship. And when you have a relationship, you have to have a way how to deal with the people. Mm -hmm. And so, it was necessary for God to give them the Ten Commandments. Mm. So this is now in the 13th century where God reveals the Ten Commandments to Moses. Okay. And so this is found in Exodus 20, of course, the very famous chapter uh, that gives the uh, Ten, Ten Commandments. Mm. 
Dr. Annie, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, you mentioned that you started start your relationship uh, with Abraham. Yes. And then obviously with uh, the Ten Commandments with Moses. When did you start your actual writing? Oh, uh -huh. okay. The actual writing is very hard to give a specific date. Mm. But after the relationship was established, mm. then the Lord assigned, not assigned, but He inspired different people mm. to write down the kind of relationship that they have with God. Mm. And that is where we have, we go to the next part, the writing, the biblical okay. writing begins. Okay. okay. This is the module wherein we say Paul writes to the Christians and this is in the first century AD. And uh, Paul was uh, the uh, most prolific writer yes. mm. in the New Testament. Mm. And I think that is the reason why we decided that there should be one module mm -hmm. that focuses on Paul. And so uh, he wrote uh, letters. Right. Of course, at that time, he did not know. We did not, nobody knew that it, they would become parts of the New Testament. But he was very prolific. And so, and his, and his letters were transported from one place to another. Mm -hmm. to, so that all the churches, mo the churches that he founded especially, will have a copy. Mm -hmm. So, how does Paul look? Nobody knows. Okay? <laughs> Nobody knows. And the New Testament does not give a description. So, when we were discussing how he would look, uh, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, but we chose someone... Uh, uh, well, we chose, probably we were influenced by our Paul comics. We have mm -hmm. Bible comics that we produce, and we uh, want a very intelligent looking, so receding hairline, and, yeah. mm. so, and uh, of course, with writing, with writing, oh, and, yeah. uh, and so this is, and, there, and our museum guests, they like their pictures taken mm -hmm. uh, with this, uh, with mm. Paul here. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think Rona more than the, the look naman of uh, Apostle Paul. It's the the letters, the, yeah. the epistles, um, his his contribution to um, the the church that right. lasts uh, up until now and yes. captured niya sa Bible. Oh oh. Yep. Pero okay po yung picture. Oh, okay naman. <laughs> pa picture tayo may Rona. Oh oh. Sige. <laughs> Proceed tayo. Yep. Tignan check po natin iba Dr. Annie. All right. The Gospels and other New Testament writings. Ah, okay. So okay. after yung mga letter, epistles of Paul, nandito na po tayo sa Gospels. Oh yeah, Paul Matthew, was uh, yep. Paul was the uh, first to write. Okay. Uh, before the Gospels, well, the, the, the this the stories about the life of Christ in the Gospels, they were part of oral history. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, the the writers of the Gospels did not write as early as Paul mm -hmm. did. And so, because Paul probably also because he was a scholar, and he wanted his letters to be uh, copies of his letters to be given to the churches. And uh, anyway, this is a very important part of the history, mm -hmm. wherein uh, the gospels are written down. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the tradition ha tradition has it that the oldest one is, or the first one to be written was Mark. Mark and then followed by the other Gospels. Okay. Okay. So now we have the, the life of Christ. Right. And this is the uh, uh, very important part, a very important part of the New Testament. Mm. So right. these are the Gospels. Ito. The, na, eh, oh. Meron na tayong printing the machines Bible is time printed. na ito. Yes. So from, is, kailan ba yun? 10th century to 15th century? Yes. Ganun po katagal. Yes. Bago 500 years. I know. Oh. Because, uh, you know, it came to a point that people want to reproduce. Mm -hmm. To reproduce. And so this will be through printing. And uh, the movable type was uh, invented by Gothenburg. And in the... And then in 1456, produces the first printed Latin Bible based on the Vulgate. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? It means that the Bible can be reproduced. Mass production. Mass, mm -hmm. mass production. Mm -hmm. Although at that point, yeah, very expensive. Mm -hmm. It was very expensive to print a Bible. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it was not by writing anymore. Mm -hmm. You can print it. Uh -oh. But now you can appreciate, no? Kasi tayo, very accessible na sa atin, uh -oh. ang printed Bible. So you will see how very blessed we are yep. in this age. Dr. Annie, and daming Bibles. <laughs> right. Well, we want to see the, we want to show the complete uh, picture. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we have already given you the development of the, the Word of God mm. and how it was translated. 
and uh, finally the the Dead Sea Scrolls they will complete the picture okay. mm -hmm. also because of uh, the reliability right. okay we want to emphasize that mm. but here so that is the complete story of the of uh, how the Word of God came about mm -hmm. and now this is the modern era wherein we have different publications mm. so we want to show you the different publications uh, the Word of God mm. printed in different, actually these are different languages mm -hmm. and uh, we have the very old translations uh, in Philippine languages, mm -hmm. they are also here. Gabi, hulaan mo nga kung kaninong damit ang suot ko ngayon. Napaka demeanor mo naman, ikaw ay isang <laughs> nagmahal, nasaktan at nagtagumpay. So ikaw si Ruth. Wow, at talagang favorite ni Ruth ang pink. Yes! <laughs> and obviously ikaw si Joseph because yes. of your multicolored coat. And Doc Annie, tell us more about this place. I'm sure the kids would love to be here where they can dress up like Bible characters. Yes, that is the goal mm -hmm. of uh, have establishing this uh, uh, area mm -hmm. for them to have fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are other things at the back, the sense in the Bible. Mm -hmm. and then, But especially this... Uh, costumes that they can wear and then they have their pictures taken. That's nice. Gabby, this has been a day full of fun right. and learnings. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Annie, for having us here in the Bible Museum. Would you like to invite our viewers? Oh yes, I would love to do that. Uh, so mga kaibigan, iniimbita ko po namin kayo dito sa Philippine Bible Society visit our Bible Museum uh, because we want you to know more about the Word of God but in an enjoyable way. Mm. So, please come. Speaking of Bible, Dr. Annie Rona, nagkaroon nga ng annual book fair sa SM Mall of Asia where many of our Christian publishers were featured kasama na dyan ng Philippine Bible Society and our special correspondents went to that event to experience kung anong ino-offer ng book fair na yun. Please watch this. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat, sa ating mga manonood. At ngayon, nandito po tayo sa SMX Convention Center kung saan ginaganap ang 37th Manila International Book Fair. Ayan, at para naman sa mga mahihilig magbasa na tulad ko, isang exciting experience ang mga book fair. Bukod sa maraming librong pagbibilian, most of the products here are discounted. Of course, EJ. Bukod sa mga big bookstore brands dito sa ating bansa, and meron din dito mga Christian publishing houses tulad ng Church Strengthening Ministries, mm -hmm. Philippine Bible Society, at OMF. At syempre, marami pang iba. So ano pang hinihintay natin, Jairus? Tara na! Ah! Woo! Bakit po ganun ka-effective yung mga print media like those books po para po maipalaganap yung mga yung ating pananampalataya? Wow. Ito eh uh, malaking multiplier factor. You know, if you try to speak to a lot of people, kung ilan nasa front mo, yun lang ang ma reach out mo. If you have that in book form, it can multiply even to the thousand people. Yun ang advantage ng printed. And it, it can even outlive the author. Yun ang maganda doon. Ano naman po yung mga advantage po na maging part po ng book fair na ito? Kasi yung Manila International Book Fair is the biggest book event in the Philippines. No? Every year inaabangan talaga yan. So pag nandito ka, so exposed ka sa lahat ng mga book lovers in the Philippines. They, so they come over, ganun. Tapos you get the chance to exhibit all your books. So people know what you have, what you have to offer. Really more than 30 years na participant ng Philippine Bible Society sa Manila International Book Fair. Wow. And ano naman po yung mga advantages na nakikita niyo po sa pag-join po ng mga ganitong book fair po? In terms of advantages, actually, napakalaki ng scope pag sumali ka sa Manila International Book Fair. Lahat ng readers, lahat ng audience, target market, um, bata, matanda, actually, lahat sakop mo na. So, tingin niyo po, bakit po efficient yung mga ganitong print media like these books po to para po maipalaganap yung, pan yung pananapalataya po natin? Uh, Siyempre, um, napakalaking uh, importansya ng Bible, lalo na physical siya. So, it will uh, change life. 
syempre eventually and alam niyo yung uh, greatness at goodness ng Lord hindi niya pinababayaan ng tao na hindi makakilala sa Panginoon through print kagaya ng Philippine Bible Society at ayan dito nagtatapos ang ating book fair tour so be sure to check this place out guys so don't miss it let's go tara bida tayo libro Welcome to Hebrews. Ito po ang bahagi ng Lighthouse Cafe na naglalayo na bigyan daan ang mga katuruan, mga prinsipyo, mga katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos upang magkaroon po ito ng inroad sa ating buhay, sa ating pamilya, sa ating lipunan. Special po ang episode ng Lighthouse Cafe Talk Show sapagkat tayo ay naririto sa Philippine Bible Society at ipinapakita natin ang kanilang Bible Museum. Anong layon po nito? upang maibahagi po sa lahat sa inyo na tumatangkilik sa Lighthouse Cafe TV Show na ang banal na kasulatan ay napakahalaga sa ating buhay. Hindi lang po sa personal, sa pamilya, sa lipunan, sa governance, sa lahat po ng istruktura ng ating society. Yan po ang paniwala ng Lighthouse Cafe. Palagi ko pong sinasabi na maliban na ang Diyos ang siyang magtatag o magtayo ng ating tahanan at maging tahanan man ng ating pamilya o tahanan ng ating bansa no ay may kinalaman ang salita ng Diyos sapagkat narito ang katibayan ang ang uh, lakas no ng ating mga institusyon in fact doon po sa Matthew chapter 7 and verses 24 to 27 ay ganito ang sinasabi ng ating Panginoon sa so, wikang Ingles therefore whosoever Heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them. Nakikinig at tumatalima at sumusunod. I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Lahat po tayo gusto natin ng katibayan. Matibay ang ating tahanan, matibay ang ating negosyo, matibay ang ating kabuhayan, matibay ang ating kalusugan, matibay ang ating relationships. Wala po sa atin na gustong maging malambot o kaya naman eh, uh, mabuway ang lahat po sa atin. Subalit ano ang nagbibigay ng matibay na struktura? That is the Word of God. Doon po sa 2 Timothy, Chapter 3, verse 16. Ay ganito ang sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Ang lahat daw po ng kasulatan ay binigay sa atin ng ating Diyos. Sa pamamagitan ng inspiration, ang sabi, And is profitable o kapaki-pakinabang for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Okay? Doctrine, reproof, correction. Doctrine means what is right. Reproof means what is not right. Correction means how to do right. And then instruction means how to stay right. Ano po? We are in the midst of a society. No? Saaman po kayo pumunta. Para bang hindi na po alam ng tao kung anong tama o mali. Wala nang pagkilala sa kung ano ang dapat ng mga standards. Ano po? Nagiging masyado ng relative ang pananaw ng punong tao. We need to bring back these things into our society. Kahit po sa ating mga kabataan, ay hindi na po alam ko ano ang paggalang at ko ano ang pambasto sa dapo. But we pray that the word of God might just have inroads to our lives. Sa pagkat yun din po ang ating babalikan, the absolute truth of the word of God. Let's take for example, ang kasalanan. Ano po? Ang malik. Ang sabi ng psalmist. Doon po sa Psalm 119 and verse 11, ang sabi, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. The one very purpose of the word of God is to show us what sin is. Para malaman ng tao kung ano ang kasalanan. Para malaman ng tao kung ano ang tugon sa kasalanan. Para malaman ng tao kung paano tinugunan ng Diyos ang ating pagkakasala. Ano po? Kaya ang sabi ng banda na kasulatan, kahit na The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Isa lang po ang pinakadakilang pake ng salita ng Diyos, that we may know Christ, who is Savior and Lord. Ang sabi niya, search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Patuloy po kayong tumangkilik sa lighthouse na offering na ito ng 
Lighthouse Kasai TV Show upang maalaman natin ang mga katuruan ito. Pagpalaan kayo ng Panginoon. The Bible stresses the importance of having good health and overall well-being. And as Christians, we know that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Kaya't ganun na lamang ang kahalagahan ng pagkakaroon ng magandang kalusugan. And we also believe that the Bible is complete, even in giving instructions on why and how we should maintain good health. From the instructions on what we should and should not eat, how we should face problems and stresses in life, and how we should deal with people around us. O oh, diba, Daisin, sobrang holistic talaga ng approach ng Bible sa atin. Yes. And we are privileged to have this special guest with us today. Alam mo ba, Erica, ang ating guest ay napakaraming specializations in the medical field. Our guest is recognized as the only medical doctor in the world who trained and specialized in four different medical specialties. Pulmonary medicine, cardiology, radiology, and internal medicine. He is also the co-founder and medical director of Rafa Health Institute in Florida, USA. His medical practice integrates regular traditional medicine, anti-aging, longevity, preventive, lifestyle medicine, and as a Christian, hindi mawawala ang biblical health. Wow! At ang maganda pa dun, Daisling, hindi lang yan. Kasama niya din ang kanyang better half. So yes. yan, makakasama din po natin is his wife, who has been a proponent of good health and long life. Like her husband, she is also an expert in biblical health and is currently involved and passionate about keeping the immune system healthy to prevent and reverse diseases. Kaya nga, mm. proponent din siya ng alternative medicine particularly for cancer patients. So, welcome po to Lighthouse Cafe, Dr. Chris and Dr. Linda Enrique. Welcome Thank po. you very much po. Salamat po. <laughs> okay, Dr. Chris, what do you specifically do po as a doctor? And are there advantages po sa inyong napakaraming specialties po as a doctor? Uh, as a medical doctor, uh, I, I deal with patients na may mga sakit na. Mm -hmm. uh, pero what we try to stress is yung preventive medicine kasi it's better to, pre to prevent diseases rather than treat diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, maraming specialization ako, it helps kasi uh, the more expertise you have, ka mas, ma mas parang at least theoretically wide yung knowledge mo, but mm -hmm. that's not necessarily true, okay? Pero, sa theoretical, pwedeng ganun. Uh, but it helps me kasi ngayon ang aming practice, eh, hindi lang purely Western medicine, mm -hmm. kundi actually in-integrate namin ang Western medicine, alternative medicine, at saka biblical medicine. Wow. Yan ang yun namin ginagawa. Uh, when we when we look at a patient with a, with a health problem, we just don't look at the disease. Uh, we look at the person na na merong tatlong aspect ng buhay niya. Mm -hmm. uh, that person is a triune being, may spirit, may soul, at saka may body. Uh -huh. So we explain this to the patient para mm -hmm. maintindihan nila kasi we want them to be fully healed talaga, mm -hmm. completely restored. Yun din ang ginagawa ni Doktora pag sa, 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 sa Cancer Institute namin. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate more, Ma Dr. Linda, kung ano naman po yung ginagawa niyo po? Uh, most of the patients sa uh, Healthy Life Center, which is the name of our clinic sa uh, Fort, ano, sa Global City, ay uh, cancer patients, most mm -hmm. of them. And so we specifically deal with their immune system. Mm -hmm. Because some doctors define cancer as really nothing but a failure of the immune system. Mm -hmm. So we make sure na sila ay uh, maayos ang immune system nila, na knowing that stress causes the immune system to really drop and be compromised. Mm -hmm. So we tell them the uh, importance of how you can keep your composure and how that even though you are under stress, you don't necessarily have to have stress, okay? Because uh, stress is actually not the stress source that comes against you, uh, against you, you know? It's not the problem you have at the office or in church setting or mm -hmm. in, in your work. 
but it's actually the way that you respond to the stress source. So we make, we make sure that they understand that and we give them instruction on how to really keep themselves in good composure and not to be under stress, okay? About 80% of all diseases uh, are related to stress. And mm -hmm. that, of course, includes yeah. cancer. Uh, mm -hmm. Ang pinaka ano sa Bible na sinasabi how na hindi para hindi tayo mas stress ay sinasabi sa Philippians 4, 6 to 8 ano na sabi ng God ay don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let all your requests be made known unto God, and the God and God's peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. So we tell them if there's any problem uh, with as far as stress is concerned, don't worry about anything. Try okay. try to have the peace of God in you by meditating on the Word. You know, by reading the Scriptures, meditating on the Word of God. And yung sa verse eight sa so the same um, chapter, ay sinabi ng Lord na uh, finally, brethren. Let your mind think only on the things that are true and pure mm -hmm. and lovely yes. and of good report, worthy of praise. And when we tell that to the patient, we communicate that to them, okay, let me minimize your stress so mm -hmm. their immune system can stay strong. Yun. And yun nga po, speaking of the Bible, so paano nyo po ba talaga define yung biblical health or biblical medicine? So, tinuturo ng God sa atin because first of all, sinabi niya, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We know that He wants us to be healthy, okay? Mm -hmm. So, there are a lot of things that you can pick out sa Bible, uh, the, uh, the, the things that will make you healthy. May mga reminders atin ng God kung anong uh, dapat natin gawin. There are two reasons, kasi dapat usapan natin before, na there are people who believe that ang ating life is 120. Mm -hmm. Although there are other people who believe it's 70 and by reason of the strength, 80. Yeah. Pero medically speaking, we have the genetic research have been, uh, they have concluded that uh, we have the genetic potential to live to 120. In fact, the oldest person in the world is now living in Bacolod, and she is 119 with a sharp mind, a productive person. Ah, wow. <laughs> and in, in Bacolod alone, there are 75 other people who are 100 years old and over. So the thing is, it is possible that we can live to 120. Mm -hmm. So why, if that is the case, why do we get sick? Why, how come most of the people die young? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and life expectancy now is a Philippines ngayon, last year it was 71.6 or 71.7. Ngayon, 68.5 na lang. Bumababa. Bumababa. Oh. Dapat tumataas, pero bumababa. Yes. So, why do we get sick if, if, if our life span is 80 or 120? Uh, there are two reasons. One is lack of knowledge. So, Isaiah 4, 6, sabi ng, sabi ng God, uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Number two is uh, ang, uh, Exodus 15:26. No, sinabi ng God, if you heed the word of the Lord your God and follow all His statutes and His commandments, I will put none of the diseases that I put on the Egyptians. Just to make this short, uh, they have excavated 50,000 mummies in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they found out na ito mga taong ito, uh, they died of the same diseases we are dying of today, except dung unang panahon, walang pangalan. Mm -hmm. May mga pangalan na tawag diabetes, at tawag heart disease, mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. So, knowing that from the Bible, and God says He wants us to be healthy, then we can deduce na, and we can pick out certain things sa Bible para tayo maging healthy palagi at hindi mamatay na maaga. Mm -hmm. Yun ang aming you know, you know, in the Bible, we have to know what the Bible talks about. We have to know what God wants us to have or to be. Uh, does it mean hindi tayo ma, uh, mamamatay ng maaga? Well, na, we can die. There's only one reason why we can die young. And that is when you have done your purpose. Yeah. The guy in the Lord, hmm. he died at 33 and a half, but he had done his purpose. Hmm. So, yeah, it's finished. Uh, Sir Paul, Maaga rin siya namatay, but he, he finished the race. Mm -hmm. Kaya, though, that's the only reason we, we, we have died young. We have, we have to die young. Everything else, every death before the age of 120 or is premature death. Mm -hmm. no? 
Um, can I expound more on the lack of knowledge okay. in terms of what? Oh. In terms of everything, mm. so like smoking, okay? Mm -hmm. If you don't know, if you did not know that smoking was bad for you, that's lack of knowledge. Yeah. Oh. If you did know that smoking was bad for you and you keep smoking, that's, that's disobedience. disobedience. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yes, po. Very simple, <laughs> pero talagang gets mo na agad na tama talaga. No? What does the Bible say naman po? Or how can you relate diet to biblical you, medicine? You know, from the beginning, uh, uh, Genesis 1.29, Ang diet natin ay mga plant-based lang, mga, mga fruits and vegetables. Pero I, I just let Dr. Ra talk about the diet. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Medically speaking, okay, um, our diet should be composed of 79% carbohydrates, 9% uh, ng protein. Mm -hmm. Actually, we don't need a lot of protein every day. And uh, that 9% is approximately the size of yung mga yung mga, mga cards, playing cards, ano? Yung deck, isang, deck, isang deck, deck ng card na yon, yung size na yon, should be the size of the meat or the fish. Yeah. Oh, oh, ano, ano, na, 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 That's true. And the rest of that should be uh, fat na, and should be good fats. Ano? Mm -hmm. Kaya yun ang basic ano ng ating diet should be. As sapat balance siya, kaya napaka-importante noon. Ang uh, sa mga patients namin, especially sa aning clinic where most of them are cancer, there are a lot of things na hindi dapat, da dapat may knowledge ang patients which a lot of them that come in don't really understand that. Like, um, they are they are undergoing chemotherapy, for example, and mm -hmm. they were they have been told you can you can eat anything. Uh, it's okay. Walang walang bawal, okay. Mm -hmm. And then they would come to us, and then we will tell them uh, that's not true because there are things that you can eat that can actually if you have cancer if you eat anything with sugar no matter what the color of the sugar is it can be brown it can be red it can be white okay or even fruits that with high content of sugar if you eat those you are feeding the cancer cells in your body and that's a proven fact so we tell them to abstain from anything sweet because then they will allow the cancer in the body to grow if they consume that even though they're undergoing so um we tell them not to eat meat at all if they, are, if they have cancer. But then, uh, of course, you can eat me meat and the other stuff if you don't have that affliction in your body. Uh, the good thing is that uh, we have to make sure that we consume mga fats na healthy, okay? Hindi pwede yung maraming saturated fats. Most mm -hmm. of the saturated fats come from meat, okay? Yung mga healthy fats, for example, are the ones that are called the uh, monosac... What you call that? Monounsaturated mono fats, okay? Mm -hmm. The best example of that is actually extra virgin olive oil mm -hmm. and extra virgin coconut oil. Those are the two healthiest uh, oil that you can have in the kitchen. And we tell our patients, if you have any other kind of oil, uh, try to discard them. Mm -hmm. Try not to oh, oh, okay. okay. because those are Very unhealthy. Bad. Because all the other oils, uh, the vegetable oil, coconut, I mean, vegetable oil, corn oil, okay? Canola oh, oil. Canola oil, all mm. those other oils are very inflammatory. They contain what is called omega-6 fatty acids, and they cause inflammation in the body, and inflammation is actually the root cause of all diseases, including okay. cancer, heart disease, and everything else for that matter. Okay, so we tell them uh, to get rid of those things. The, those two uh, monounsaturated fats are very healthy, contain omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory. So those, those are healthy for the body. Okay. Well, uso -uso po ngayon yung mga common diseases po, like hypertension, diabetes. How would you relate this to biblical health? The reason we get sick, actually, is uh, the common denominator sa mga sakit natin is your inflammation. And the reason we get inflammation is pag na-compromise ang ating immune system. Mm -hmm. uh, kaya yung kagaya ng, kagaya ng diabetes. Ang, prob ang problem sa diabetes is either yung, yung pancreas hindi nagpuputus ng enough insulin to uh, para ma-metabolize yung mga sugar or nagpuputus na ng enough insulin pero hindi nagre-respond ang, ang, ang body natin para ma-use up yung, uh, yung sugar. So, if you, if you try to kwan yung Bible, yung teaching ng Bible, 
na makikita mo doon sa Bible na mga 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 sugar actually is not very good sa ating health. Mm -hmm. uh, makikita mo yung mga mga dapat natin kainin ay eh, yung mga kinakain natin sa Bible actually hindi nagpupudus ng diabetes. Mm -hmm. Especially type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Type 1 is another story, okay? Yes, ngayon. Kaya maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Chris and Dr. Linda. Maraming na naman po kaming natutunan, no? Talagang medyo bitin lang po tayo sa oras. Pero talagang we can see how the Bible can be relevant even in our days. Kasi yung iba, mm -hmm. iniisip nila, ay, yung Bible for the, for the old times. Pero hindi, it is very relevant today sa atin. Oh, okay. Kaya, yes. so if meron po ba kayong, if you want to invite them, like sa mga seminars niyo po, or yung clinic niyo po, where they, where they can contact you? Okay, contact ko namin sa Rapa Health Hall, meron kaming uh, uh, four clinics, uh, pero meron kaming main number is uh, 757-3335. Uh, meron kami sa, sa Makati, sa, sa Antipolo, sa Watanga, sa Quezon City. Uh, ang Healthy Life naman. <laughs> ang Healthy Life po ay nasa Fort Bonifacio Global City. Nandun kami sa core ng uh, 39th Street at 11th Avenue. Um, ang telephone number ho namin ay 555-1010 or 1010, 555-1010. Uh, we have office hours from Monday to Saturday from 9 a.m. hanggang hong 6 p.m. Okay. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Salamat Chris po. and Dr. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Ayan, kaya napakahalaga ng ating kalusugan and indeed we need to have good health so we may be profitable Christians. But more than our physical need, our spiritual needs are far more important and the Word of God is also complete in addressing this need. Kaya naman samahan niyo po kami muli sa susunod na linggo para sa isa na namang makabuluhang usapan dito sa ating Doc Talks! Thank you for having joined us in this special episode of the Lighthouse Cafe. And we hope you were blessed and you enjoyed our discussions today. And we would like to thank our ministry partners. Salamat pa sa Four Gospels Catering Services sa Miami Cakes and Lighthouse Blue. We would also like to thank Ms. Maureen Aranza Mendez for our supply of makeup products. Thanks too to Fresh Salon and Spa. Visit their Espana branch for your beauty needs. And again, we would love to hear from you. Send us your comments or feedback by our official Facebook page. Napi nyo lamang po ang Lighthouse Cafe. You may also write us an email at goodtalks at lighthousecafetv.com. So I'll be with us again next week as once more the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church brings to you another episode of the Lighthouse Cafe. Where good talks happen. Where good talks happen.